Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. So, what are we making a video about today? Well, uh, today I am going to make a video about building a third version of my test bench. Uh, I have the second one there, it's working quite well, but it's got a couple of things that I wanted to fix and, um, well, I've learnt a lot of things uh, from obviously building the first one and the second one was a big jump. Uh, this one is probably going to be a bit more of a refinement, I would say. Uh, so, don't know if we're going to muck around with painting it and that sort of stuff. I might leave it very plain Jane vanilla, um, but we will see when we get to it. So, uh, well, let's jump into doing some handyman stuff. So a bit unorthodox for TechFur, we're doing a voiceover for one. And uh, as you can see, this is just sort of the basic steps that I did to sort of build the bench. Uh, it's effectively a wooden one, and the motherboard standoffs you sort of measure out, drill through the holes, and then screw in the, um, the actual standoffs themselves. Uh, usually it requires sort of poaching a uh, motherboard tray from a old case that you no longer need. And uh, you kind of need an angle grinder to get it out, but uh, for me, having an angle grinder, that wasn't a problem. And uh, well, now that those rather mundane bits are done, let's uh, move on to something a bit more interesting. Alright guys, so I finished building the frame here, uh, it was a bit of work and I believe the camera actually cut out halfway through building it, but that, that's that's fine. Um, so, it's a very basic frame, we're not going as extravagant as the last one. Uh, so basically you've got the motherboard tray up here, uh, you've got your standoffs here, 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 around here, that'll take an ATX board or an MATX board. Um, we've got the cutouts for the cabling here and here. Uh, there's also obviously a big hole here for running cables up the side if I need to. Uh, this is a cutout for CPU brackets. So if I have like a, uh, a CPU custom cooler or something, needs to mount in there. The bracket has enough space in there to fit. Uh, and then underneath, we haven't got anything going on really. It's pretty basic, it's pretty plain. Um, and it's also very compact, which means that uh, it's easy to store because the last one was not easy to store. Um, so, we're at the point now where we actually need to mount the uh, hard drive cages and uh, we need to find a spot to uh, make it easy to mount a power supply and, and have it attached to the thing and not have it bloody moving around. So, uh, let's solve that problem. Righto, so uh, this is the hard drive cage we're going to be using. As you can see, I've already got uh, two of the three hard drives already packed up. We'll talk more about them later. Uh, and I did a test fit um, just to see how everything would go and I kind of realized a giant flaw with where I originally had placed this so uh, we're doing a rethink uh, the problem I had was when I'm mounting uh, the motherboard the motherboard uh, is gonna be the, the, the rear IO is back here uh, and then your storage ports and that sort of stuff can be here what I did was I put the hard drive caddy in on this corner down there uh, and of course the cables were sort of stretched and it, was, it wasn't really working so uh, in the event that the SATA port's in a weird spot I'm going to have trouble. So this is going to get moved into the back corner over here uh, and then the power supply I'm thinking uh, is probably going to go somewhere in the corner over here because it, it, it makes sense to do that. So um, well cable ties are our friend and battery drills are our friend so let's drill some holes and uh, cable tie that hard drive cage in. So, uh, hard drive cage is in. Uh, it's pretty sturdy as you can see. I can probably grab the whole bloody thing by the cage, so it's just fine. Um, good old cable ties do their job. Uh, so, the next problem to solve is to get the power supply mounted. Ladies and gentlemen, it's done. Uh, so, as you can see, power supply firmly sitting there, no problems. It does move around a little bit, but you know, cable ties, uh, does the job. And again, hard drive cage, does move around a little bit, but it, it's fine. As you can see, I can shake the thing around, nothing falls out. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe it is time to go back inside and do a test mount and see how it all works. 
Okay guys, so we're in the new set now. Uh, we're ready to build out this test bench and I'll just give you a quick sort of rundown of the set. So uh, this is a workbench I'll be sort of on. It's about a meter by a meter. A decent size, uh, good enough to sort of work on stuff, spread things out. Uh, we also have back here a couple of monitors. Uh, this monitor here is a 1080p monitor. Uh, this one's a 1440p. 1440, not really gonna use it for many benchmarks. It's more just for uh, if I need an, an auxiliary monitor or whatever. Um, and we have our screwdrivers and tools and all sorts of cool things. But uh, let's focus on the build here. So I have a, an existing test bench. It's still in one piece. It's actually under the table right now. Uh, it's got parts fitted to it. Um, we're gonna keep two test benches. So this one here, I'm gonna set it up for AHCI biases. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar, any BIOS made in like the last 10 years is gonna run in what's called UEFI. Um, but the problem with UEFI is uh, older machines won't boot within a UEFI OS. So if I were to plug in, let's say, this particular board I ha happen to have here, which is like an old AMD Phenom, uh, Gen 1 Phenom, I might add. If I tried to plug that into my UEFI test bench, it wouldn't boot. Uh, it wouldn't know how to talk to the drivers, it wouldn't know how to do anything. Uh, it would effectively be a giant paperweight. So. That's why we're doing a second test bench, uh, aside from the fact that I want something that's a bit more compact as well. Um, we're going to set this up as an AHCI test bench, and um, to do that we need an AHCI motherboard. Now, that's what this is for. Uh, now, the other thing with AHCI, people seem to forget this, is modern computers can boot into AHCI. So, this is not just backwards compatible, it's also forwards compatible. So, a Ryzen system would boot on it, um, for example. So. Um, that's the general gist of what's going on here. Uh, that's that's why we're building this, and uh, well, I think we should put some parts on it. So that was actually quite easy to build on, as you can see, uh, it's pretty plain Jane, um, pretty simple, I can pick it up, move it around, do all the things I need to do with it, uh, so it's working well. Um, drives are plugged in, we've actually got uh, two one terabyte drives plus a 256 gig SSD, I'm going to configure that in such a way that all of the games can be loaded onto the machine, uh, and it will boot from a nice quick SSD. Um, as for the rest of the specs, uh, it's a 650 watt power spot that we bolted in there. Uh, it's not going to be enough if we're getting like stupid things like 2080 Ti's, but I don't see a world where I'm going to be able to just buy a $2,000 graphics card out of the blue. Um, but who knows, things could change in the coming months, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, let's see if my handiwork actually powers on, because the power button is actually hidden around the side here, so best of luck on that screen. Hey! Look at that, a bit of luck. Um, well, I guess that means that work. that's working, so that's it for this build, uh, that's it for this video. Um, very happy with the new YouTube space, uh, very much hoping to get more videos out soon. Um, if you want to ask me questions about how I built this test bench or how you should build one, uh, feel free to jump probably on the Discord server. Uh, if you leave a YouTube comment, I'm not going to see it or it's just going to be very difficult to reply because it only notifies me of new messages. But um, I don't see any histor historical conversations, so if someone replies to a comment from three months ago, I will not see it. Um, but anyway, if you go on the Discord server that is in the description below, uh, you'll be able to respond to me and ask me questions, and I usually respond within a day, depending on what I'm up to and depending on where you are in the world. Um, so yeah, that's it for this test bench. As for more videos, they will be coming out uh, periodically now. I'm going to try and get back onto at least a fortnight. I'm going to hope to get to a weekly schedule. Um, but honestly, I've missed doing this so much. I love doing YouTube. I love doing builds and things like this for you guys. Uh, so if you like the video, like it. If you disliked it, do whatever you want. Um, any comments, description below or the Discord server, as I said, in the link description. Uh, and uh, don't forget to get subscribed guys and I will catch you in the next video.